So we were learning about the amphotericin B or the drug which is very commonly used as uh, the one of the important antifungal drug including the recent mucormycosis. So uh, already we have learned about the amphot this is the amphotericin B is a amphoteric polyne antibiotic and it is obtained from the streptomyces nodosus. So the, it is derived along with the amphotericin A and uh, not used chemically, clinically in uh, 1956, one of the mo most oldest drug and it is insoluble in water and uh, little stable, unstable and is rapidly decomposes on the exposure to light. The commercially available powder for injection contains the sodium resoxycholate as a so stabilizing agent. Then the structure of this centrophotoxin already we have learned. Then the chemistry is already it is dealt. So amphoteric. So coming to the mechanism of action, it is very similar to the general mechanism of the other antifungal drugs, and it has very high affinity for the sterols, particularly the ergosterol and present in fungal cells of the membrane and uh, the interaction with membrane ergosterol formation of channels or pores with altered membrane permeability so then what happens is leakage of cellular contents will happen and the fungus is going to die and altered potassium hydrogen exchange uh, results in the efflux of potassium and influx of the hydrogen ions producing the state of the acidosis especially which halts some important enzymatic process. So we will see the uh, graphical representation or the videographical representation of uh, the mechanism of action of the general antifungal drug. So the fungus you know it's a cell wall is there then uh, you can see that the, the fungus is having a, a very specific uh, cell wall and uh, it is containing the cell membrane inside cell membrane is there and cell membrane and uh, these are the ergosterols ergosterols so the building block of the cell membrane is the then there is an enzyme the beta 1 3 synthase and it's uh, usually it plays of the glucan chains with the particular chains after the chain beta 1 3 glucan and uh, beta 1 3 synthase so the ozone antibiotics especially mycorrhizal and other things they are going to come in and they are binding with that of the protein alpha dimethylase and uh, which is also a combined enzyme with that of the cyanide made of chrome p450 so, the uh, varieties of the antifungal drugs will have the different mechanisms and because of this thing, the cell membrane is lysis happens. Whereas the amphotericin B, the present drug, what we are dealing, is coming inside the cell and especially the bacteria, this uh, fungal cell and it hampers the potassium hydrogen ATPase uh, pump. So it opens the potassium hydrogen phase pump and because this thing the bacterial cell membrane becomes destabilized and the varieties of the other drugs are also acting on beta 1 3 synthase so which is a very important step in the uh, cellular transport of the uh, fungal antifungal drugs whereas these agents So, the loss of important organic molecules such as the amino acids and sugars from the fungal cell results in irreversible damage. So, you know the brief mechanism, anyway we will go in detail in later uh, coming slides and it binds preferentially to the ergosterol rather than the cholesterol. 
so the principal steroid uh, found mainly cholesterol is the principal steroid sterol molecule present in the mammalian membranes a relative but not absolute and its specificity is uh, totally it is conferred and high concentration of aquatorsin b directly disrupt the fungal cell membrane permeability as, as we have seen the hydro potassium and hydrogen pump it will be hamper and hence the permeability will change so amphotor should be like other uh, selective uh, antifungal agents so it has also come the uh, immunomodulatory free action especially little immunomodulatory free action by differentiating both humoral and cell mediated immunity you know what are all the humoral immunity and cell mediated immunity and this enhances the host ability to fight fungal infection so the amphotericin b is a fungistatic drug in normal dose but in a very high dose fungicidal it becomes the fungicidal drug and uh, coming to the anti uh, fungal spectrum or antimicrobial spectrum the amphotericin b and other polyene anti Uh, biotics have the broad spectrum antifungal activity that's the advantage of these agents because the sensitivity of various species and strains of fungi to these antibiotics vary we are very widely it differ from one uh, agent to the uh, other agent and useful against several systemic fungi including the candidia histoplasma Streptococcus, then Blastomyces, Oxidiodiodes, Aspergillus, and Corydra. So there is a big range of the fungal species which are susceptible to the amphotericin B, and it has greater activity against the Candida albicans, the Aspergillus, and Coccidial meningitis than the newer. Also, because it has got good penetration capacity, it itself is having some immunostimulant activity. Whereas the dermatophytes are inhibited in vitro, but uh, it is not effective against the clinical dermatophytosis. Maybe in vivo efficacy is not there. Then some algae and protozoa like this Leishmania, then Trypanosoma, then Trichomonas, then Entamoeba histolytica. All these are sensitive to the polyene and polyene uh, antibiotics because it's a antibiotic also so the it is effective against the leishmania cs and trypanosomiasis also especially in case of different susceptible species of the animal and amphotericin b has no antibacterial antirickettsial and antiviral action so unlike the anti bacterial drugs the correlation between the mic and clinical purpose of the antifungal drugs is usually it is poor so whereas it is an establishing factor in other drugs so the assessment of the antifungal action of amphotericin b is generally done through efficacy studies in the animal models so that's why the animal models are very much required for the experimentation then coming to the resistance pattern how the resistance is gained so as usual it is similar to the other antimicrobial agents so the number one it is going to decrease the adverse viral content in the fungal cell membrane so to gain uh, the resistance inside the fungal cells so the change itself the ergosterol content so that there is no spike for the binding up of the antifungal drugs and cross resistance with nystatin may develop rarely then coming to the kinetics in very short so the they are poorly absorbed from the gastrointestinal tract and therefore oral antimicrobial therapy or the antifungal therapy is used only for the gastrointestinal fungal infection so uh, the gastrointestinal many times the fungi are also causing some of the 
reduction for specific case of SIBO, that is small intestine bowel overgrowth of all the organisms, including the fungi. And for systemic infection, given repeated daily low IV injections, because it is not absorbed after the IM or other parenteral route. So it is only administered by IV injection, because in the other route, the absorption is erratic. So whereas the uh, IV injection <coughs> distributes unevenly, unevenly in a different type of the uh, distributed unevenly then throughout the body bringing highly tissue bound in some organs so it fails to achieve therapeutic concentration in some of the body fluid such as the cerebrospinal fluid vitreous humor and amniotic fluid so these are the areas where it cannot reach because of the different barrier then it is a distribution in uh, the pancreas bone muscles and cns is uh, somehow limited because it is not going to pass to different barriers and inflammation for uh, various penetration into the drug into the various body fluids whereas uh, it is not going to pass the blood brain barrier hence it is uh, administered intrathecally means in the thecal space of the spinal cord it is going to be injected whereas extensively it is bound to plasma proteins in the case of the humans and also in case of the mammals so this appears to become associated with cholesterol containing uh, membranes in many tissues just like the peptide glycans in case of the gram positive bacteria here the cholesterol is having the basic support for the cell wall and its uh, stability so later once absorbed it will go to different tissues and then slowly released into the circulation so the uh, uh, elimination how it is done it is little complicated and in the humans and animals due to the binding up of the drug to the tissue and cholesterol so the drug is going to bind with that of the tissue and also to the cholesterol so this drug importance of b inhibits the biphasic elimination with an initial plasma half life of 24 to 48 hours but which is also followed by the long long uh, longer terminal half life about 15 days so this has got the biphasic elimination means in immediately after the administration initial pl plasma half life is just uh, uh, the 24 to 48 hours but it has also got the longer half life especially 15 days so this uh, biphasic elimination refers to the excretion of the drug with simultaneous disruption in the particular tissue so the plasma concentration curve especially plasma concentration time curve uh, so after c max shows the different orders of the release then the low levels of the drug mostly the metabolites appear in urine over a period long period uh, not uh, very shortly but it takes long time uh, drug is eliminated via bile so instead of uh, uh, excreted in case of the urine the uh, metabolites of these drugs are uh, eliminated via bile in human patients it takes more than Two months for complete clearance of the amphotoxin B. This is one of the alarming thing because such a long half life. At the same time, the concentration of the amphotoxin, which stays for more than two months, and uh, coming to the side effect, whenever there is a nitrate, you know very well that 
the side effect is the present. So it is uh, causing the uh, nephrotoxicity. It is by the two mechanism. Number one, intense renal vasoconstriction. So the blood supply to the kidney is being, going to be drastically reduced or the vasoconstriction offers. And binding up of the drug to membrane cholesterol in the renal tubular cells. So this is also the intelligent way of the microorganism that it will bind to the membrane cholesterol of the renal tubule and along with that it tries to cheat the host cells that it is not a foreign body. And vasoconstriction of the renal tubules occurs within 10 to 15 minutes of the injection and uh, lasts for 4 to 6 months. Actually this is the scientific data. And this results in reduced blood supply and decreased glomerular filtration or so ultimately what happens? This results in reduced blood supply and decreased glomerular field uh, repaint. Then interaction of the drug. Uh, with the renal membrane cholesterol produces alteration in the tubular membrane permeability leading to altered electron fluxes especially the potassium and hydrogen fluxes the acidification abnormalities that is the metabolic uh, acidosis and uh, concentrating effects like this polyuria and polydipsia more and more urine will be out but what to compensate this uh, particular uh, water loss the fluids are given. So the water loss uh, can be observed in case of the small animal like the polyuria means repeated time it is going to urinate and it is being only polydipsia. So uh, just like this lead and other thing, uh, these drugs most uh, both buffering activity and excess release of the calcium into the circulation. So it is going to go inside the bone marrow, then it is going to replace the calcium which is present inside and causes excess calcium in the blood which may participate precipitate in acidic environment. And uh, the kidneys resulting in the nephrocalcinosis means nephrogenic is calcium stones are formed. So especially these drugs do not have any biological difficulty but uh, treating the systemic uh, disease it's okay. So renal toxicity it, it generally depends upon the total cumulative dose and duration of the total duration of the therapy and the renal function usually returns to normal after the drug withdrawal and uh, some residual damage can persist even after the discontinuation of the particular drug that's also the m4 toxin b when uh, compared to the other animals all other animals the cats do apparently more sensitive so of course uh, the cats are very sensitive animals so anything may kill the cats of the owner and the systemic administration is also associated with other adverse effects like the anorexia, nausea, vomiting, then anemia also because of the bone marrow suppression, then cardiac arrhythmias, especially the CNS signs if it is given intrathecally. Because uh, whenever the drug you are going to, to the intrathecal, it will reach the brain. So it may cause arrhythmias and hepatic dysfunction and thromboplebiscite is at the site of action. So these are all the general common side effects. And anaphylactic type of the reactions uh, can also happen many times. Okay. Then coming to the treatment of the side effects itself is somehow complicated. 
guys uh, we need to address certain uh, important conditions like number one free treatment with antiemetic like the perinorm or metaclopramide or fipronil then antihistaminic agents also like uh, chlorpheniramine and uh, the engineer so this prevents the nausea vomiting and uh, the hypersensitivity reactions this slide is put here to explain how the fungus cell will be so this is a left side one uh, fungus cell is uh, you can see and it is containing the very well developed uh, the mitochondria the nucleus etc coming to the outer coat where we are uh, having some interest is the cell membrane and cell wall so the cell membrane is located here and all of them combinedly form the cell wall whereas uh, the outer layer is the protein different type of the uh, proteins here it may be alanine glycine like that only just like the bacterial cell whereas the beta glucan is the middle one this beta glucan bond and the chitin structure is there before this particular thing especially it is separated from the cell membrane of course it is having the less susceptible to the cell membrane like in drugs so the serolastatin and dopamine infusion may reduce oliguria and azotemia and intravenous fluids like this uh, prosamide you have learned it is a high serum diuretic so if you administer this thing furosemide and uh, the aflatoxin b it prevents the fall in renal blood flow and glomerular filtration rate so the it requires a special uh, carrier system it's also called as the micros uh, this uh, it's also called as the liposomal carrier medium medium or the system so it is introduced to deliver more and more drug uh, sensitive to the cells of the action which is uh, thought to be more important one so the amino glycos this amphotericin b is also being prepared in various fat emulsions to decrease incidence of nephrotoxicity but instead of all this effort lipid emulsions products like the liposomal products are more likely to cause the side effects like the vomiting nausea and also the phlebitis severe pain in the site of the injection site so it causes the phlebitis then uh, coming to the contraindications yes uh, this is also as this is one of the toxic drugs one need to use lot of care especially using this particular drug so this drug is contraindicated in patients that are hypersensitivity to it this central source is for almost all the agents in the chemotherapy so the infection is like if it is there in infection which is an emergency situation where life threatening and no alternative is available this is taken care by the amphotericin b and it should be used with extreme caution with renal uh, insufficiency and patients renal uh, function should be aggressive and it is monitored by during the therapy so that's also another instruction to the candidates who use this drug then proper uh, prophylactic means before the disease comes prophylactic medication as a mentioned above should be followed to decrease the incidence of the adverse effects of this uh, uh, drug especially polyene antibiotic
then there is an important chapter that say drug interaction we should know what are the drugs should not be administered along with the infotoxin b so this may be combined with antimicrobials like the five fluocytosine then the minocycline then rifamycin and it produces the synergistic effect so this is the synergy with the five fluocytosine etc then however there is a combination of amphotoxin b and myconazole azole derivative has reported to produce the anti agonistic effect so this also one should know and these things not recommended concurrently with digitalis because the amphotoxin b induced the hypokalemia aggravates the digitalis induced there is also the cardiotoxic effect and this should not be used with loop diuretics corticosteroids may exorbitate the potassium losing effect then the combination of the amphotoxin b and the nmbs nas skeletal muscle react uh, this uh, relaxation and uh, the combination of amphotoxin b and uh, the anti neoplastic drugs produce the enhanced cytotoxicity so they should not be treated simultaneously the coming to the uh, clinical use so you should see that the amphotoxin b is a anti corona viral anti fungal so it is been very popularly used now so effective in anti fungal agent and especially the mucormycosis is treated which is uh, secondary to the corona viral infection and it is used mainly in case of dogs and some other species of the animal Uh, for the serious life threatening systemic infections and effective treatment may require several courses because it is having lot of uh, uh, toxicity but it we need to treat the patient and uh, the treatment frequency and duration vary with the type of the infections so how it is administered it is administered in 5% Uh, uh, dextrose and administered very slow IV. So in the hospitalized patient only, this is administered. Whereas uh, occasionally or rarely, this is used topically for the cutaneous and mucocutaneous candidiasis. Coming to the dose, 0.25 to 0.5, a general dose. So it is available as amphotoxin B. That's the injection. which is containing 50 mg so the total doses here which is available 50 mg and it is for the iv infusion only so directly iv should not be encouraged and uh, the dose of the particular drug amphotericin b the the it is should be reduced to half when used combination with Lucifer, because both of them are acting in the synergistic pattern. Then this is the amphotoxin B mechanism. Hi everyone. Today in this video we are going to discuss about amphotoxin B. Yeah. How this drug acts as antifungal agent? What is its structure? What are the important side effects? Precautions? all these things we are going to discuss in this video what is the amphotericin b this is one of the antifungal antibiotic that is derived from streptomyces nodosus this drug is having three important features first of all it is a macrocyclic compound commonly known as a macrolide we have few of the antibacterial macrolides like erythromycin clarithromycin and azithromycin they are effective against the bacteria but here this amphotericin b is a macrolide which is effective against fungal infections so amphotericin b is a macrolide 
or it's also called as macrocyclic compound that means it is having a large cyclic structure second important thing is that amphotericin is a polyene antibiotic polyenes are the compounds which are having the conjugated double bonds now this amphotericin b is having seven conjugated double bonds we have another polyene antifungal agent that is nystatin which is not used for systemic fungal infections it is only prescribed for topical fungal infections and third important thing is that amphotericin is a broad spectrum antifungal antibiotic that means this drug is effective against the various types of fungal infections but only one of the limitation is amphotericin b is not orally available because of its poor absorption it is mainly given by intravenous route in order to treat the systemic fungal infections so today in this video we are going to discuss about this amphotericin b now this amphotericin b is having a broad spectrum of activity <coughs> so this drug is effective against cryptococcus species these are the yeast infections and it is also effective against candida species which are yeast like fungal infections similarly amphotericin b is also effective against aspergillus species which are mold type fungal infections and finally this drug is also useful in the fungal infections produced by histoplasma species these species are dimorphic in nature that means they have the properties of both yeast as well as mold type fungus in this way amphotericin b can be used in yeast yeast like mold and dimorphic fungal infections so one of the important clinical use of amphotericin b is in the treatment of cryptococcal meningitis this one of the fungal infection that affects the central nervous system and this meningitis is mainly produced by cryptococcus neoformans so this fungal infection mainly affects brain as well as the spinal cord and particularly this is observed in the immunocompromised patients for instance in case of hiv patients already immunity is compromised in such patients cryptococcal meningitis may be developed which can be treated by amphotericin b this cryptococcal meningitis mainly affects the brain as well as spinal cord resulting in few of the symptoms like fever headache and neck pain along with some mental confusion and altered mental functionality in such conditions amphotericin b can be used similarly amphotericin b is effective against candida species among the candida species one of the important organism is candida albicans this fungal organism mainly produces systemic candidiasis and this is one type of yeast like infection the symptoms of systemic candidiasis depends on invasiveness as well as spread of fungal infection for instance if they are going to affect the cutaneous system they can produce skin rashes as well as itching if they affect urinary system they they can produce painful urination pelvic pain abdominal pain they can also affect the esophagus resulting in the oral thrush some white patches can be observed on the tongue as well as the esophagus along with some difficulty in swallowing so all these symptoms may be present in the systemic candidiasis which can be treated by again amphotericin b third one this drug is also useful in the treatment of aspergillus species so one of the pathological organism is aspergillus fumigatus this organism can produce pulmonary aspergillosis so it can produce few of the symptoms related with the pulmonary system we can mainly observe fever cough chest pain difficulty in breathing all these symptoms can be observed in the pulmonary aspergillosis and another clinical yeah. indication is the treatment of mucormycosis this mucormycosis is also called as black fungus and particularly this fungal infection is observed in yes uh, this is one of the important uh, disease now ongoing especially in the uh, situation of corona so students please uh, uh, give some uh, uh, this attention especially the mucormycosis which is called it is also called as the black fungus this is the Uh, what do you call as the talk of the town? Everybody is knowing about this mycormycosis, and we will see how it is going to act. Okay. The immunocompromised patients. 
so after the recovery from the covid-19 mucormycosis is going to be affected in many of the patients in these patients the immunity is compromised because of use of high dose of the steroids for longer periods otherwise the risk of mucormycosis is more associated with the diabetic patients so who are having uncontrolled diabetes they may have high risk of mucormycosis again in such conditions amphotericin b can be given so this condition involves few of the symptoms like headache nasal congestion one side facial swelling black lesions at the nose particularly at the nasal bridge along with other symptoms like fever cough chest pain and abdominal pain so this is one of the fatal fungal infection generally not observed in the highly immune potent people but in the immunocompromised patients this mucormycosis can produce fatal conditions which can be treated by amphotericin b and this drug is also used in the histoplasmosis one of the organism is the histoplasma capsulatum again this fungal infection can affect the lungs resulting in few of the sin as well as dimorphic fungal infections apart from these this drug is also useful in the treatment of visceral leishmaniasis this is also called as black fever the structure of amphotericin b you can observe it's a large structure with a cyclic structure that's why it's called as macrocyclic and we can also observe alternative arrangement of double bonds so it's having the seven conjugated double bonds so amphotericin is a macrocyclic polyene antifungal antibiotic now let us see how it acts so amphotericin acts on the fungal membrane so this is the fungal membrane which is made up of the lipid bilayer on the lipid bilayer chitin layers are present and above these chitin layers the glucagon polymers are arranged finally they are coated with the different proteins on the outer membrane so these are the different layers within the fungal cell wall but within this phospholipid layer one of the lipid is present this is nothing but the ergosterol in the mammalian cholesterol is present but in the fungal cells ergosterol is present so amphotericin b is having the high affinity towards this ergosterol this drug can enter through the fungal cell wall and it can bind to this ergosterol such that it can form a hydrophilic channel on the membrane now through this channel few of the cell components can be leaked out one of the important component is the potassium so potassium from the fungal cells are going to be leaked out through this ion channel produced by amphotericin b that's why amphotericin b is called as ionophore it produces a ion channel on the fungal membrane in this way potassium is lost out of the membrane at the same time rigidity of fungal membrane is going to be lost few of the proteins are going to be degraded and once the membrane rigidity is going to be reduced few of the essential and small molecules can be lost and leaked out of the fungal membrane in this way amphotericin b can result in that increased permeability of the is it audible i think megana you told that nothing is audible hello sir in that video sir no it is not audible no sir video that audio, video the, okay okay then i will skip it it's no problem so the nystatin is the next uh, the microbial agent and uh, it is also a polyene anti uh, fungal uh, antibiotic produced by the streptomyces uh, that's the norse and it is uh, all the mechanism structure activity relations etc are very similar to that of the amphotericin b and it has activity against the variety of the fungi but its use is restricted to fungal infections especially the skin and the gi uh, then mainly it is cause uh, the it is effective against candidia species especially the oral candidiasis etc and it has got very high systemic toxicity 
they state that the most of the antifungal drugs do have very high systemic toxicity because the a fungal cell is having the similar structure to that of the host cell but the nystatin is not absorbed from the skin so topical uh, oral administration is uh, safe then the cutaneous irritation may develop on repeated topical application so the drug then yes So the oral administration may cause the lot of GI discomfort, and parenteral administration is associated with hemolytic anemia. So this is having lot of the side effects, primarily skin, mouth, intestinal, or vaginal candidiasis in dogs and cats and birds. Of course, in case of human being, it is used. So this is lesions of thrush. That's the oral candidiasis, and vaginitis usually respond very well to this particular nystatin. and uh, it is not effective against the dermatophytes so it should not be prescribed then the topical preparations include the ointments creams and powders topical preparation and tablets and suspensions are available for the oral administration and the combination with antibacterials and steroids are also available uh, but it enhances the efficacy to take the candidia super infection usually it happens uh, so it should not be used in patients that are hypersensitive to it should not be used and parenteral administration is very toxic and should not be used so whereas the emphotoxin b we are using in mucormycosis and uh, especially the black fungus infections uh, with toxicity is there but there is no other alternative then this is once again to make you to remember this is a fungal cell which is containing all the structures of uh, similar to that of the host cell or the mammalian cell uh, so it is containing the cell membrane and also the cell wall with uh, the outer protein and it's containing the outer coat and this is the beta glucan then there are chitin molecules are present here then this is a cell membrane so the structure of nystatin is like this very very exactly similar to that of the emphotoxin b whereas this dose of this thing so the thing to remember here it it is expressed in units especially the here you can right side you can see that there is a nystatin tablets that's uh, 10000 or 1 lakh tablets are there so the dose is 50000 to 1 lakh 50000 units so this need to be remember so cats it is 1 uh, lakh units totally whereas it is also used in case of the crop mycosis and mycotic diarrhea in case of the birds that's 50 to 100 grams per ton of the feed for 7 to 10 days need to be administered then the natamycin or it's also known as pimericin so it's a pollen antifungal antibacterial antibiotic so obtained from the streptomyces nilnesis streptomyces nilnesis so this uh, is used for topical treatment and also the disinfection of the ringworm contaminated anaerobes and it is less irritating when compared to the amphotoxin b and uh, used to treat fungal keratitis or dermatitis which is induced by the fungus so structure of the uh, natamycin is like this of course the 5% suspension or 1% ointment this is the suspension ophthalmic solution and 1% ointment is available for the eye infection hope you might have heard that in case of the corona recovered patients especially with comorbidity who have been received receiving the uh, corticosteroids they always get the infection of the mucormycosis so there also there will be eye infections etc will be there as, and also the nasal septum and uh, the dose of this drug is uh, which is available as eye drop and 5% ophthalmic solution 
So this is install, installed into the eye every one to two hours. And homoisin or the primamycin is also another drug obtained from that the streptomyces primprina. So streptomyces primprina is the base uh, or the source of this amycin. And this is very similar to that of the mistatin and used mainly topically for the oral thrush. Topically for oral thrush. Then it is uh, having the oral, it is especially the cutaneous candidiasis and trichomonas vaginitis. So uh, the vaginitis is, which is caused by the trichomoniasis is effectively treated with hemicin. Then this is the structure of the hemicin. So almost all the structures of the different antifungal drugs will look similar and the mechanism of action is also similar. Then other polyene antibiotics like candicidin and also the hagemycin are the polyene antifungal antibiotics used occasionally for the local fungal infection. So uh, just to give the difference to remember how the bacterial cell wall looks like. So the fungal cell wall is like this, fungal cell. So it is having a bud, which is containing the different intracellular material. So here you can see that uh, this is the cell wall of the bacteria. Of course, the uh, outer coat is the cell wall, especially in the particular uh, fungal cell, whereas it is not having the pilus. Here, the hair-like structures are pilus, but this is not having the pilus. Of course, it has got the cell membrane. Both of these have got uh, cell membrane, whereas the ribosomes are present throughout the cytoplasmic fluid. So the cytoplasm, both of them are having, whereas the bacteria do have the pilus and also the capsule then the nuclei and the mesosomes like this uh, polysomes and the plasmid these are all the structure whereas the fungal cell do have a septum then it is uh, more developed than that of the bacterial cell it is having the golgi this is golgi complex or golgi apparatus then peroxisomes are there of course, the endoplasmic reticulum is also present if he has this, the ER, the protein synthesis source. So it is also having nucleus, very well developed nucleus. Then the nucleolus is also present. Then the lysosome is also present. Then the cytoskeleton will be there. The very well developed mitochondria, the energy source is present. And the vacuole is also there whereas the bud scar is here so this is uh, very very similar to that of the mammalian cell that's why the drugs which are used against to this uh, fungal cell attack are many times they are going to have the toxicity to the host cells also then uh, just uh, to compare with that of the plant cell the difference between the plant cell and fungal cell just for your reference that's all the plant is having the chloroplast and amyloplast extra to that of the thing and all other things are uh, present in the fungal cell. So it is containing cell wall, the Golgi apparatus, the cell membrane, peroxisomes, ribosomes, uh, round endoplasmic reticulum, the nucleolus, nucleus, cytoplasm, mitochondria, vacuoles, then cytoskeleton. All these structures are very similar to that of the plant cell. So this uh, fungal cell is uh, in between the plant and the mammalian cell. So in, in plants also, many varieties of the fungal infections are seen. The heterocyclic benzopurons or benzopurons are the uh, systemic antifungal antibiotics obtained from the penicillin, penicillium griseofulvin. So that is the 
Well, that is the microorganism which secretes the griseopolyne. And it is isolated in 1939, so many years back. So this antifungal activity demonstrated only around the 1960s. So this exists as the odorless, nearly colorless, bitter tasting, white to creamy white powder. And uh, of course it is slightly soluble in water and uh, it is soluble in the organic uh, solvent like the methanol, ethanol, etc. And the particle size vary from 1 micrometer or ultra micronized up to 10 micrometer in diameter. So structure of the Grisio fulvin. Then the mechanism, it is uh, similar to the general mechanism of antifungal drug, but it's a fungistatic drug which enters into the susceptible fungi through an energy dependent transport system. So this acts by interfering with polymerization of the microtubular protein with microtubules. That means this is effective against the fungi by inhibiting the microtubular protein synthesis and interaction with microtubules interfere with the spindle formation. So you know what is the spindle formation etc. during the cell division thereby arrest the metaphase so of the cell division. So the cells they divide and divide and the metaphase of the cell division is blocked. And this leads to production of multinucleate fungal cells. So the fungal cells will have the uh, varieties of the nucleus and they become slowly not functioning. Then the impairment of the microtubule function may also interfere with the transport of essential material the cytoplasm to the periphery which accounts for the inhibition of the hyphal cell wall synthesis. So it interferes with the transport of essential material through the cytoplasm to the periphery. Then the griseofalvin also probably binds to the RNA and inhibits the nucleic acid synthesis. So coming to the antimicrobial uh, spectrum, it is a narrow spectrum anti fungal drug active only the dermatophytes like the microsporum, trichophyton, then epididio, uh, phytons and unique among the antifungal agents that on oral administration accumulates into the keratin and produces action against the superficial fungi, especially the oral mycosis. But this is ineffective against the deep mycosis, especially the Candida species and the, some of the bacteria. So this is a specific fungistatic agent, older and uh, dormant fungi, but may be fungicidal to the actively metabolizing and growing young ones, especially in the fungi. Then the fungal resistance, it's a very common thing. It's very fast also. So this, uh, griseofalvin, of course, the fungal resistance is rarely a practical problem because it is not uh, having such uh, antifungal uh, resistance. However, dermatophytes can be made resistance mainly due to the decreased drug uptake. That is the mechanism. And kinetics, the amphotericin B and the other drug, metamycin, etc., they are not absorbed orally, and we'll see what about this particular drug, it turns out. So after oral administration, it's uh, uh, variably and erratically absorbed from GIT, mainly due to its poor solubility. Then absorption is, uh, in general, depends upon the particle size and also the different preparation, what uh, we have seen, it turns out. Then, So the small size ultra micro ionized particle and a fatty diet facilitate the absorption Then oral absorption of micro sized form of the drug varies from uh, 25 to the 70 percent when the ultra micro size is the, its approaches 100 percent. So that's uh, the 
dosage forms are designed in such a way that it should be absorbed properly. And after absorption, these is concentrated in skin, hair, nails, fat, respiratory, and also the skeletal muscles and liver. These are all the places because it accumulates in the skin and hair, and so it is effective against the dermatophytosis. So it is high affinity for keratin precursor cells and griseofalvin remains bound to them and persists in the new keratin hair nails. Uh, the new hair nail of the skin growth accompanied by the shedding of the old growth is necessary for complete eradication of the fungi. That means, so the already which is infected, suppose there is a nail infection from the uh, fungi then uh, there will be shedding up of that particular nail, hair, skin, etc. Then it requires the complete eradication. Slowly requiring the therapy for skin infections and up to 